Hello and welcome to our recap of our lecture on inventories and construction contracts, IAS 2 and IAS 11. Dealing first of all with our inventories, IAS 2. Well, the key thing was that we needed to remember that valuation of inventory is at the lower of cost and net realizable value. And we simply needed to know how to calculate each of those. So for cost, well, this was the cost of bringing the items to their present location and present condition. So that was going to include the cost of the purchase, which was the price, any duties, the transport and the handling of the good, and also any conversion, because it's going to bring it into its present condition. So that's direct costs of conversion. So things that it will be will be labour and overheads. Okay, so those will be included in the cost of conversion. Things that are not included in cost will be any abnormal waste, any storage costs, any indirect admin costs, and any selling costs. Those are not included in the cost. Looking then at net realizable value, because we're looking for the lower of cost and net realizable value, net realizable value is calculated as the selling price less the cost to complete and the selling costs. So that will be the net realizable value. So we did illustration one to compare them both and see which one we were going to use. We then moved on to construction contracts. Remember, construction contracts is because we're building an asset. So we're building an asset maybe for a customer, but it's going to take a few years to complete it. So we've got a problem here. It takes a few years to complete, and we need to spread out the treatment, i.e. we need to spread out the revenue and the costs that we're going to have on building that asset and spread out the profit recognition over the time that it takes to build it. So we need to spread out the costs and we need to spread out the revenue. And we need to do that to meet the accruals concept rather than uh, recognising all the costs and revenue at the end of the contract. So we need to learn what costs we can bring into um, a construction contract. So they will comprise specific contract costs like site labor, materials, depreciation, property, plant and equipment, moving of plant, plant hire and design, all of those specific contract costs. Also, we can bring in general costs attributable to the contract. For example, insurance costs and overhead costs. Lastly, we can bring in any other costs that are under the contract terms. Those will make up the costs of our contract. What about the revenue then? Well, this will comprise the initial amount that we agree on the contract, plus or minus any variations. So if we think we're going to get some extra revenue, well, then we can include that. So if we can reliably measure it, and we're probably going to get it, well, then we can include it. For example, an early finish incentive. However, we would need to reduce the revenue by any penalties, for example, for delays that are incurred. So those are the costs and revenue we're going to recognise. How do we go about doing this? Well, what we need to do, first of all, is decide, are we going to make a profit or are we going to make a loss? If we're expecting to make a profit, we recognise that profit by the stage of completion of the contract. If we think we're going to make a loss, will we do that all immediately? We recognise all of the expected loss immediately. So we looked at illustration two to see how to go about that. Remember that IAS 11 is all based on estimates. So in order to estimate the outcome of the contract, we need to have a reliable estimate. So we need a reliable estimate of the contract outcome. And it will be reliable if... On a fixed price contract, we have the total revenues measured reliably, probable economic benefit, the costs measured reliably, the stage of completion reliable, and the actual costs can be identified clearly on the contract. If the contract is a cost plus contract, it can be a little bit more difficult. We'll need to make sure there's probable economic benefit and that we can identify and measure reliably the costs. Now, if we can't get a reliable estimate on the contract, that causes us a bit of a problem. Uh, if we have revenue, can we actually recognise this if we can't get a reliable measure? 
Well, if we have incurred some costs, we're going to recognise revenue to the extent that it's probable that those costs will be recovered. I.e., if we can't get a reliable measure, we'll simply recognise enough revenue to write off the costs. We won't recognise any profit. So the costs will be recognised as incurred in income, and we'll recognise enough revenue to write off those costs and not make any profit. So set off the costs as they're incurred, if they're recoverable, and no profit is recognised. And we did that in illustration three. So remember we said that we're going to recognise our profit by the stage of completion on the contract. We may have to calculate that. If we do, we can do it in two ways. Either as a proportion of the costs on the contract. So costs to date over the total cost of the contract times 100. That will give us the stage of completion or a survey of the work. The work certified over the total contract price times 100. Either of those is acceptable. The exam question will tell you which one to use. So when it comes to presentation of this, in the income statement, we'll show our revenue, we'll show our costs, and we'll show the profit or loss on the contract. And in our statement of financial position, we need to do a working. So this is the working you need to learn. You need to be able to do it. So costs incurred, add any recognised profit, less any recognised losses, less any progress billings that will be given to you in the question, and that will give you an, a gross amount to or from customers. If it's positive, it will be an asset, an amount due from customers. If it's negative, it will be a liability, amount due to customers. So the result can either be due to customers, which will be a liability, or due from customers, which will be an asset. If it's positive, when you do your working, it will be an asset. If it's negative, it will be a liability. And we did a detailed illustration in illustration four. The question approach, therefore, was the first thing to do was to calculate your total expected profit. You then multiplied that by the completion percentage, and that was the basis for the income statement. We know that's how much profit we're going to recognise. Then we did the balance sheet working to see if we had amounts due to or from customers. Remember that in subsequent years, we're calculating the total profit expected. If we've calculated the total profit expected over the contract, we need to subtract out any amounts we've already charged through as profit in previous years. So we looked at that in detail in illustration five. So that was a recap of our lecture on inventories and construction contracts.